The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hey, Ethelbert. Do you ever take a word association test? I don't think so. How's it go? Oh, it's simple. Look, I, I give you a word and you answer immediately with a word that comes into your mind, see? Okay, try me. All right, red. Blue. Boy. Girl. Run. Walk. Bottle. Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Pick Up. Nine o'clock in the evening, the Blue Note Cafe. Ethelbert, the head bartender, is chatting with a customer, a tall, thin, white-haired man with a gentle face, when he hears a familiar voice. Hi, Ethelbert. Huh? Oh, good evening, Casey. Excuse me, will you, Mr. Hutchins? Sure, Ethelbert. I ain't seen you all day, Casey. Where you been? No, I've been busy, pal. You told me you were on the lobster shift this week, which means you don't start to work till midnight. <laughs> Listen, shut in. This is spring. Miss Williams and I have spent the day in the park. We've been taking pictures of the birds and the bees. Where's Miss Williams? I left her at the office. Hey, look, give me four packs of cigarettes, will you? Two of Miss Williams' kind, two of mine. Okay. Hey, listen, pal, wait a minute. Huh? Who, who's the guy you were talking to when I came in? His face is familiar. Oh, he's Britt Hutchins, Casey, the horse trainer. Oh, sure, yeah. So, well, what's he doing in town? His stable is racing out west right now. I got an idea he's here looking for the murderer of Cass Marlin. Yeah? You know, Cass Marlin yes, was the yes. jockey who got bumped off down in Florida just before he was to ride. Yeah, of course I know. Yeah. Well, did Hutchins say that he was looking for the murderer? No, I just got the idea because he and Cass were such good friends. Uh-huh. All he really said about the killing was what the papers had been saying, that it's still a complete mystery who done it. Well, it's pretty obvious why it was done. Cass Marlin in the saddle, Fireball will have won the Alderstone Trophy race. I hear the cops have questioned Steve Harold about it. He's supposed to have won a lot of money when Fireball didn't even show. Well, they've questioned all the big betters who've been known to fix things when they can. But Captain Logan investigated Steve Harold at the request of the Florida police and found that Steve looked pretty clean for once. Listen, you know, I think I'm going to have a talk with Britt Hutchins. He trained Fireball, and as you say... He and Cass were pretty close. You won't get any more out of Hutchins than I did, Casey. That's what you think, pal. Ah. Say hello to him, anyway. Hi, Britt. Remember me? Casey, Morning Express. Casey. Oh, yeah. Hi. How about the same? Mm. You know, we've been, uh, we've been hearing a lot about the Cass Marlin killing up here. I knew Cass pretty well, so... If you're going to pump me for inside dope on it, fella, I don't know any. Cass was like a son to me. He worked for me. He was set to ride one of my horses. One of my owners, Mr. Ashley's horses, I mean. When somebody put a bullet in his head and... That's the whole story as far as I'm concerned. I see. Well, guess I'll be going. Got business to tend to. Yeah, okay, Britt. Well, I'll run into you again sometime. So long. So long, boy. Hmm. I'll see you later, Ethelbert. Going so soon, Casey? Well, I gotta take Miss Williams her cigarettes. <laughs> Didn't I say you'd get the old brush a uh, uh, I hate guys who pull the I told you so gag. So long, pal. <laughs> Excuse me. Huh? Yeah? Your name's Casey, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Morning Express photographer? Right again. Let's take a walk. Well, I say, it's a little sudden, sister. I don't think I know you. Or uh, do I? You don't. Well, then what's... Call it a pickup. Well, I don't go in for pickups. Well, so... call it anything you want till we get someplace where we can talk alone. I've got news to sell. You interested? Always. Okay, where are we going? Well, there's a little place around the corner, Farley's Tavern. That suits you? 
Mm, it'll do. But I don't like the place from a social standpoint, sister, so the news you want to sell had better be on the level. <laughs> Okay, sister, now speak your piece. Well, after the waiter leaves. Oh, jittery, huh? You'd be jittery, too, if you were in my spot. In a jam? Afraid of being bumped off, that's all. Oh, you're beginning to interest me. Anything else? No, not now. Gee, thanks, pal. All right. Well, he's gone. I'm listening. How much will your paper pay for the exclusive inside dope on a murder? Well, it depends on the murder. Some are in the dime a dozen class, you know. How about the Cass Marlin killing? Cass Marlin? Yes. Ah, this is a coincidence. What's a coincidence? Well, I was thinking about that shooting when you picked me up, that's all. The dope on it's worth plenty, isn't it? The real dope is. I can give it to you. Well, I'll have to be sure of that before I go to my city editor and proposition, you know. I can't pay out dough on my own, you If know. I tell you who I am and how I know about the case, will you promise to keep it under your hat? Whether we make a deal or not? Yep. I guess I can trust you. Cass told me you never double-crossed anyone. Cass told you about me, huh? Yeah, that's why I looked you up when I hit this town tonight. I phoned your office first, and they said I might find you at the Blue Note Cafe. I was on my way over there when I saw you come out. I recognized you by a picture Cass had. You, uh, you must have been a close friend of Cass's. He was going to marry me. Yeah? What's your name, sister? Edith Landell. Edith Landell. It's funny, I've seen most of the police reports on the case, and I've come across no mention of a gal named Edith Landau. You've heard Cass was getting a divorce, haven't you? Yeah. Well, on that account, very few people knew I was his girlfriend. It had to be that way, because his wife's lawyers might have made something out of it. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a pretty good answer. Well, give me one for this. If you cared enough for the guy to want to marry him, why didn't you go to the cops with this inside information? You think I'm a phony, don't you? You might be. Well, listen, wise guy. I didn't say I cared anything about Cass. I was going to marry him because he was in the big dough. When he died, I saw myself out of his dough. The cops wouldn't pay me a dime for the information I had, and Cass owed me something one way or another. So I decided to cash in with a big newspaper, a bigger one than there is down in Florida. Yours. Is that straight enough for you? Too straight to like very well. I don't care what you think of me. I've got a story to sell. But you've got to act quick. I can't keep it bottled up any longer, even for Doe, because the killer knows I'm onto him and he's after me. Now, any more questions? Only the one for the big prize. Who's the killer? Uh-uh. I'll tell you that when I see money. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand? My story's worth it, and papers like yours can pay it. <laughs> I've always wanted to see my city editor drop dead. He will when he hears that figure. Well, come on, I'll take you over to him. No. Nobody must know anything about my part in this till the killers are all behind bars. It was killer before, now it's plural. Well, I'm pretty sure there's more than one man mixed up in this. And I'll tell you something else to prove that I'm on the level. The cops' theories are all wrong. They think Cass was killed so he couldn't ride fireball, but I... What's the matter? That big guy just walked up to the bar. He knows me. Uh, yeah, I know him. Then you know who he works for. Yeah. Steve Harold. Look, I gotta get out of here quick. Mr. Casey, don't let him follow me. Stall him, hold him by force if you have to till I get away. Promise me you will. This is an act, sister. I swear it isn't. You say you know who that man is. Okay, I'll hold him. And lend me five dollars. Lend you... I haven't got enough for cab fare and I've got to get away fast and far, please. Well, I've always been a sap. Here's a fin. Thanks. Look, I'll phone you at your office in an hour and tell you where to meet me, where it'll be safe. And don't let Denver Lane follow me. I'm going. Goodbye. Hmm. Hi, Denver. Hello, Casey. Noticed your girlfriend left in quite a hurry. Yeah. Had to run for a bus. You know her, Denver? Never saw her before. Not a bad-looking bimble. Who is she? Well, just a... Pickup, I mean. Didn't know you went in for pickups. I have my moments. Cigarette, Casey? Yeah, thanks. You, uh, in no hurry to leave here? Why should I be? I just come in. Hmm. Yeah, Denver, I have my moments. <laughs> With 
that story, you let her take you for five dollars, Casey? Ah, uh, well, Annie, oh. the act she put on was pretty solid. And she had me hooked when she pulled a big scared act about Denver Lane. You know, the guy's a gunman and he works for Steve Harold, who's up to his neck in the racing racket. For a moment, the parts all seemed to fit. Until Denver made no attempt to follow your little chum. He stayed in the joint for half an hour, and then he walked over here to the express building with me. In the rain? Yeah. <laughs> That's one break I got tonight, anyway. We were within ten feet of where my car was parked when it started, so I just reached in and got my raincoat. <laughs> Denver got soaked. <laughs> well, put the raincoat on again. Let's go over to the blue note. Yeah. Yeah, I see enough of this photographer's room when I'm on duty. It's over an hour now since Edith Landau said she'd phone me in an hour, so... Have you been waiting here thinking that she might phone you? Well, Annie, her act was almost too good for a five-dollar take. Oh, nuts. When I start being a sap, I keep it up, I guess. Come uh -huh. on, let's go. Casey! Oh, hello, Moocher. Are you a guy I'm glad to see? Uh, now, listen, Moocher, I'm short on dough Who today, Who wants though? dough? You, uh, you don't start on a job till midnight, do you? No. Swell. You won't need your car till then. My car? Mine just had to be towed to the shop, and now City Desk has given me an assignment out in the sticks. Give me your keys, pal. Uh, no, no, no. The last time you borrowed my car... Could I help it about them two fenders? Well, you could have paid to have them fixed, didn't Miss you? Miss Williams, I leave it to you. Shouldn't us press photographers stick together and help each other out? That's with that stuff. Now, oh, don't... I, uh, I, I admit Casey's a better button pusher than I am. He's a genius. The only one of his kind. Now look here. Which is all the more reason why he should give me succor in my hour of need. Casey, can a master like you let down a bum like me? Yes. Don't say that. No, no. Oh, come on, give him the car keys, Casey. You huh? know he'll get them if he has to cry real tears. Oh, I guess you're right, Annie. All right, take him, Mooch. Ah, my pal. My beloved colleague. Get out. Nay, nay. I tarry for one further little favor. Oh, my. Yes, the, uh, the weather is inclement, and I came to work without mine raincoat. All right, take mine. Ah, uh, my friend in need. And a perfect fit. My undying gratitude, Monsieur. And uh, can you uh, spare a cigarette? Oh, that too. All right, here's half a pack and a book of matches. Now get out before I commit a little mayhem. I go, Master. I do those biddings. Goodbye, Miss Williams. Fair lady. Farewell. He's really a character, Casey. Oh, some character. You, you wouldn't think so if he was in your department. As I said before, when I start being a sap, Annie, I... Oh, uh, uh, there's your desk phone. Yeah, it might be that Edith. You uh, know. As you said before. Uh, mm, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, Casey speaking. Oh, city desk. Listen, Burke, I don't go on duty till 12, so I'm not going to take any assignments now. I, I... Well, of course I'll let you talk. Who's stopping you? Go... Oh, murder, huh? Strangled in a vacant lot. Sounds good. Yeah, I got the address, yeah. Mm, here we go again. Any details? Identification found on the butt. What? What's that name again? Yes, we'll grab a cab and get out there right away. Hey, what is it, Casey? That dame, Edith Landau, was murdered about 15 minutes after she left me. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. It's here. It's here. The Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle for beer and ale. You pay no deposit. You don't have to return it to the store. It holds a full 12 ounces. A full 12 ounces, just like an ordinary beer bottle. Yet it's so compact it takes up a minimum of space in your refrigerator. It's perfectly balanced and light as a feather. Easy to handle, easy to pour from, chills beer quickly... Holds the chill longer. And it's easy to open, safe to open. A flick of your wrist and into your glass pours a golden stream of wholesome American beer, brewed and bottled and served the American way. In glass. Yes, in glass. Glass which brings you beer and ale brewery bright. Glass which can't affect taste or flavor. Glass, the sanitary container for beer and ale. Your favorite beer and ale is on its way to you right now in the new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. Another great contribution to convenience and to gracious living and entertaining. The Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle is a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass.
Look at that body again, Casey. You're sure it's the woman who told you that story? Definitely. I was sure of it after my first look, Logan. Captain, her story must have been the truth. I told you, Annie. I was more than half sold on that story of hers. And she borrowed that five spot to take a cab from Farley's Tavern, huh? So she said. Yeah. This place is about three miles from Farley's. Now, assuming her story was true, she might have paid off the cab after the first mile or so to save money and started walking. The killer had been following her, and when she came to this block of vacant lots, he hopped out of his car and strangled her. But Denver Lane was the guy she was afraid of, Logan. And Denver didn't follow her. He was with me at the time she was being strangled. Yeah, but his boss, Steve Harold, wasn't with you. Well, you cleared Harold of suspicion in the Cass Marlin murder, Captain. No, we didn't clear it, Miss Williams. It was simply impossible to prove he had any part in it. Hey, Captain Logan. Yes, yeah, Sergeant? We just got a message for you on the car radio that I... Casey. Huh? What's the matter? Well, stop looking at me as if I was a ghost, Flanagan. Casey, you're dead. I'm What? Well, if you're not, the message to just come in is all cockeyed. What do you mean? Headquarters says that Casey's dead body has just been found in the wreck of Casey's car. The moocher, Annie. Oh, sure, he borrowed your car. And had an accident. Accident? Nothing. There's two bullet holes in the dead guy's head. Well, the thing's plain enough now, Casey. Denver Lane had spotted that girl before you and she went into Florida. Yeah, maybe before she picked me up outside the Blue Note, Logan. He had another of Steve Harold's guys with him. And the other gunman followed Edith Landell and killed her while Denver stuck close to you? Sure, Miss Williams. Denver figured the Landell dame had given Casey the dope she had on the Marlin murder. He couldn't risk any rough stuff during our walk to the express building, so he waited outside in a car, and when he saw a guy my size wearing my raincoat come out and get into my car... Well, the information he thought you had had to be suppressed. With you and the dame out of the way, there'd be no evidence. Well, now, what are you going to do, Captain? I'll show you, Miss Williams. Hey, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Get headquarters on your radio and instruct everyone concerned to let no outsider have a close look at the body found in Casey's wrecked car. And tell them to give out information that it's definitely Casey's body. Yes, sir. Uh, wait, Sergeant. Yep. Also, I want Denver Lane and Steve Harold brought to headquarters as soon as they can be found and kept in separate rooms. And instruct arresting officers to tell them nothing about anything. Uh, that's all. Right, sir. I get it, Logan, the old surprise treatment. Huh? <laughs> and a big surprise. If Sergeant Flanagan thought you were a ghost, the guys who think they killed you, <laughs> they just might go to pieces and tell us what we want to know. Steve Harrell's cooling off in this room, Casey. Now, I'll go in alone, and you follow, and you hear me uh, clear my throat. <clears> throat> okay, love. I hope this works. Oh, it'll work, Miss Williams. You, you stay here with Casey. Here goes. Hello, Harold. Oh, good evening, Captain, and good morning, rather. Well, now that you're here, perhaps I'll get some information as to why I've been rudely conducted to this, uh, well, unglamorous place. My boys didn't tell you? No. No, no. All they told me was to come along, and naturally, as a law-abiding citizen, I made no resistance despite the invasion of my constitution. No, right. stop talking like a book. <laughs> All right, Captain. But look, none of you cops have anything on me, and I'm definitely in the clear with your homicide bureau, so, well, what's the big idea? A girl named Edith Landell was killed tonight. Oh, really? Now, you've never heard of her, I suppose. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, I have. Really? Yes. Well, Landau isn't a common name, so I presume it's the same girl I met with Cass Marlin several months before he was killed. He'd uh, fallen rather hard for the little gold digger. Well, why didn't you tell me about the Landau girl when I questioned you on the Marlin case? My dear fellow, you didn't ask me. Uh. Hmm. Why do you suppose she was killed tonight? Because she knew too much about Cass Marlin's murder. Uh -huh. And she told what she knew before she died, Steve. Hmm. You interest me. Uh, by the way, uh, whom did she tell? A man who also was killed. Then you're still out on a limb. No, not quite. This man told the story to his newspaper associates before two bullets got him in the head. Their evidence will be only second-hand hearsay. It wouldn't be an admitted at a murder trial. You know your law, don't you, Steve? Yeah, I know a little. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little cold. <clears throat> Hello, Steve. Oh, hello, Casey. Nice to see you, boy. Uh, hmm. Uh, go on with your story about the man who was killed, Captain. Uh, uh, you two chaps look kind of strange. Uh, anything upset you? Nothing at all, Steve. No, nothing at all. 
Denver's the guy who tried to kill you, Casey. He obviously didn't get word to Steve Harold about the things that happened tonight. Now, we'll work the gag on Denver now. All right. All set, pal. It ought to work on Denver. You say this newspaper guy who was shot spilled the dope he got from the Landel dame? That's right, Denver. Well, it's no break for you, Captain. The courts don't accept that kind of third-hand evidence. You're right again. Oh, well, if only the poor guy was alive. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, a little cold. <coughs> Hello, Denver. Well, nice to see you again, Casey. Uh, yeah? <laughs> Casey and I had quite a get-together at Farley's place tonight, Captain. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't spill this on him, but he was in there with the crummiest looking pickup you've ever seen. Nuts to you and your ideas, Logan. No, Casey, nuts to you. Your big act fell flat with both Denver and Steve Harold, huh, Casey? Yeah, so flat it busted all over the place, Ethelbert. Well, neither of those men could have thought Casey was dead. Both of them are ice-cold characters, but no guilty person could have taken the shock of his appearance without some giveaway reaction. Yeah, you'd think so. They didn't even flicker an eyelash, either one of them. Maybe they was tipped off in advance that it was really poor Moocher who was shot. No, no, no. Logan went over that angle before we made our play. He says a cop on the scene kept everybody away from the body. Nobody got close to it at all except other cops. Besides, after two heavy caliber bullets go through a guy's head, Ethelbert, it's uh, sometimes pretty hard to tell who he was. Hmm. Maybe the killer knows by now he didn't get you, Casey, so he'll try again. Oh, that's covered, thank goodness. Captain Logan has assigned two bodyguards to Casey. Hmm, yeah. A louse. That uh, innocent-looking gray-haired man over in the corner is one. And Sergeant Flanagan is hanging around outside. You know, I just got to find the killer in order to get those guys out of my hair. I can't stand it. Hey. Yeah? Annie, I've just remembered something. You know, I've been a dope. Hmm, that's a surprising confession. Hey, look, Edith Landau was about to tell me something when she saw Denver. And then she got scared and stopped cold. She said... Wait a minute, let me think. She said the cops' theories are all wrong. They think Cass was killed, so he couldn't ride fireball. And that's as far as she got. Well, all the original suspicion of Steve Harold was based on the idea that he didn't want fireball to win. Sure. Uh, Ethelbert! Uh, 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 oh, oh, don't, don't, well, don't bark at me you. like that, Casey. I'm a nervous guy. You certainly are. Well, okay, all right. But look, when did Britt Hutchins leave this joint tonight? Tell me that. Uh, Britt Hutchins? Yes, yes, the, the horse trainer who was on vacation while his stable is racing out west. Why, he, he went out the door right after you did. Ah, then he saw me talking with that girl. He could have seen me going to Farley's with her. He could have followed when she left there alone. He, he, he even could have strangled her to death and gotten back to the express building in time to see Moocher get in my car. Then Hutchins could have followed him and thought it was me. But Hutchins was a friend of Cass Marlin's. He, he couldn't no, have... No, no. Friendship in the gambling racket seldom goes deeper than the money pocket. And horse trainers should only take vacations when their horses do. Annie, come on. Where? We're going to tell Logan to find Hutchins. Yeah, Casey... See you later, Ethelbert. Now, wait for your gray-haired bodyguard, oh, Casey. Oh, never mind. Just... Those bodyguards can't keep up with me. I'll be very happy. There's a cab, Annie. Hey, taxi! Oh, Casey! Annie, Casey, duck... I'm shooting at you! Oh, I'm okay. Oh, no. Flanagan, get him. Get him. We got him, Casey. No, let me go. Casey. Well, hello, Britt. So you were the guy. And you missed me again. Huh? No, he didn't miss you. Help, get a doctor. There's blood all over Casey's head. He's dying. Annie. Annie, I'll bet you two to one. <laughs> that for the second time tonight, the report of my death will be greatly exaggerated. <laughs> What will you have on your breakfast toast? Orange marmalade where tart and sweet commingle, or blackberry jam evoking memories of that cool early morning walk through the woods? Apple butter fragrant as an autumn orchard? 
the ruby flash of currant jelly or strawberry jam. But why choose only one? Serve them all. Grace the breakfast table with a symphony of delicious taste and luscious color. Stir up appetites. Start the morning right. Supply quick energy for an active day. Yes, brighten up the breakfast toast with preserves, jellies, and jams brought to you by those packers of the finest foods, the preserve industry of America. Now, naturally, these experienced packers bring you preserves packed in glass. Clean, sanitary glass safeguards wholesomeness and flavor. Crystal clear glass provides a rainbow of color on your table. Anchor glass containers and modern anchor hocking sealing methods bring you flavor at its peak. Anchor glass containers and anchor caps are both products of anchor hocking. The most famous name in glass. Okay now, Casey? Oh, sure, Ethelbert. That bullet only grazed my forehead. Yeah, well, if it had struck you only a half an inch deeper... Well, as Britt Hutchins will tell you, Annie, many a horse has lost a race by half an inch. And I think, as a matter of fact, this bandage is very becoming. <laughs> so is the little hospital nurse who put it on. It isn't, and she wasn't. Uh, Annie, you shouldn't be like that, not to an invalid. Hmm. Tell me, Casey, what did Hutchins have to say when they got him down to headquarters? Well, he confessed that he killed Marlin because his jockey friend had double-crossed him. That was a hard one. You see, he made Cass Marlin a little proposition. And Cass but... was to ride Corn Popper and lose. Yeah. Corn Popper? Yeah. Well, that was the last horse Cass rode before he died. Corn Popper was a comparatively unimportant horse, Ethelbert, in a comparatively unimportant quarter-mile race. So attention was centered on Fireball and the big Alderstone trophy. Well, to cut off the alibis, Ethelbert, instead of riding Corn Popper to lose, as he'd promised Hutchins, Cass Marlin brought him in first. And Hutchins lost every dollar he'd been able to beg, borrow, or steal. So his feelings were hurt, and he killed Marlin. Cass had told his gal about the play, and she witnessed the shooting. So Hutchins had to get her, too. And when he finally caught up with her, she was being confidential with Casey. Well, you know the rest. Yeah, you better be careful about making pickups from now on, Casey. Mm-hmm. I'll say he had. Oh, I don't know. I, I have my moments. Yeah, but like my sister Edna says, quote, you can never tell when one moment's gonna be the next. Oh, no. Yeah, unquote. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deeks. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 